السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله ومن <تصفيق> يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرهام إن الله كان لكم رخيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن سك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل وحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محتوثاتها وكل محتوثة في الإسلام بدعة وكل محتوثة ثلالة وكل ثلالة في النار All praise due to Allah We praise him and we have told him and with an effort of salatu salam and the rasulullah wa ala alihi wa dhurihatihi man tansanna bi sunnati illa yawm middin amma bad as our father my dear brother salam ni iman today inshallah by the permission of Allah the tawfiq of Allah the help of Allah as wa jal and the fad and the rahmah of Allah and the mercy of Allah inshallah we like to speak about 
the importance of the Muslim home. And when we're speaking on this topic, we have to take into consideration that there are many aspects to this topic, bithnillah. One very important aspect that a lot of khatibs, they fail to mention on the mimbar is the reality of domestic violence. The hawla wa la quwwata billah. Domestic violence in the Muslim homes is on the rise. May Allah protect us and give us firmness in our homes, in our imam. Amen. This is a very, this is an extremely sensitive topic to speak about because domestic violence occurs in many ways, many shapes, forms, and fashions. And it's not only physical abuse that occurs in the homes, but also there is verbal abuse, there is psychological abuse, which sometimes the psychological abuse would cut, can cut deeper and have a lasting, much lasting effect than the physical abuse. As Muslims, we need to strive to preserve the sanctity of the Muslim home. This is something which should be on the top of the priority list is to address the issue of domestic violence. Because this, my dear Salam Yaman, is all boiling down to a severe, deep-rooted identity crisis that exists in our communities, especially here in North America, where a lot of us are we're in pockets of communities and we're trying to fit in so much so that we forget about who we are as Muslims. So we mentioned last week about the importance of having a clear identity which is founded on the fitrah, the natural disposition of Islam. And we need to establish this amongst our youth at a very early stage in their life so that they will not become corrupt later on in their lives. Alhamdulillah, if we have a healthy Muslim home, then we have to thank Allah for that. And there are too many broken homes in the GTA. And this is not becoming less, it's becoming more. It's spreading to the outskirts. Because a lot of us, we ran from the GTA, from the inner city to the suburbs, so as to protect the sanctity of our homes and our families. But, Ma'asif Shadid, very sorry to say that the majority of the families are growing up broken with only a single mother, a mother to look after the children. And how is it that the child, the psyche of the child, when they grow up without a father figure in the home, in their lives, so this single mother syndrome is something which is affecting the Muslim homes. And this is not a healthy environment to raise a family in. We have to understand that we all have roles to play as Muslims. And it's very imperative that we take upon ourselves the responsibility, whatever Allah has put upon us, and not try and push or shove the responsibility on the other person in the relationship. Last week, we mentioned the ayat in the Surah Nisa, ayat number 34. Allah says, That the men have a degree of responsibility over the woman. Allah has given this Qawama for the men so as to maintain the home and to look after the family, especially the women. So the men are designated to be the caretakers of the home. And how is this to take place if the home is broken and they do not have a male figure in the home? Then that home is a lopsided home. So how are we going to implement this verse? So we have the woman now playing two roles in the home. 
They're wearing the pants and the skirt. And this is not a healthy environment for anyone to grow up in. There are many men who take eyes like this and other than this out of the correct perspective so as to put down and degrade and belittle the Muslim sisters. There's also a very important ayah in the Quran where Allah just says in Surah Baqarah, ayat number 228. Allah says that this ayat is indicating that Allah knows best that the women have certain degree of responsibility over the men and the men have a certain degree, a level of responsibility over the women. But the men have a little higher status of responsibility and caretaking and maintenance of the women. And Allah is Aziz and Hakim. So some men, they want to exalt themselves in their responsibility or in their roles. Because we're all role-playing as husbands and wives and caretakers of the home. But some men specifically want to exalt themselves in that position. So we have to understand that Allah has given us certain rights and responsibilities. And Allah is Aziz and Hakim. He is the one who is mighty and wise. So that man who wants to exalt himself over the miskeen female, then they have to keep in mind that Allah is one who is mighty and wise. There's a hadith in Sahih Muslim reported that Jabir said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَتَقُوا اللَّهِ فِي نِسَائِهِ That we should have the consciousness of Allah in regards to our woman folk. فِنَّ كُمْ أَخَذْتُهُمُ هُنَّ بِأَمَانَةِ اللَّهِ أُقَمْ خَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَامِ That we have taken them as a trust, as a trust from Allah. وَلَلْحَمْدُ The woman folk in our care are only placed under our care because it's a trust, a manna from Allah that we have to take due consideration with. The family, my dear Salam Iman, is a blessing. It's a blessing to have one and to be a part of one, ulalham, that we have to work at preserving. It's a blessing when we make the necessary effort and adjustments within ourselves to try and preserve the family unit to the best of our ability. There's another ayah where Allah has mentioned and reminded us about the importance of having the taqwa and consciousness of Allah. In Surah Hujrat, ayah number 13, Ya ilidhi, ya ayu al-nas, inna khlaqanakum min dhakrin wa untha, wa ja'anakum shu'obin wa qabali ta'arafu, inna kramakum inda Allah ta'akum, inna Allah alimun khabir. Allah Azzawajal has stated in this noble verse, speaking to all of mankind, that he has created all of us from a male and a female. And he has made us into tribes and families. So that we can know and recognize one another. And the noblest of us in the eyes of Allah Azawajal, are those who have taqwa. Those of us who have the consciousness of Allah in our roles. So the only difference between us is, our, is according to our level of God consciousness. Alhamd. So with that said, my dear brother Salam Niman, we must work towards putting an end to domestic violence. And it's not going to come overnight. It's a work in process that we all have to make an effort. We all have to do our part to educate one another. This is the starting point where the men and the women take it upon ourselves to want to learn that they have a desire to learn the do's and don'ts of a good, workable relationship. It's not going to stop at one person, and it never stops at one person. It's an educational process that we all have to learn and work towards understanding our specific roles and duties and responsibilities. And if we don't make it an effort, make an effort and take it upon ourselves to educate ourselves 
and our, especially our woman folk, because that's where the children are raised from, the laps of our mothers. So it's not going to be in our best interest to keep the women ignorant. It should be in our vested interest to educate the women folk of our ummah. Because we educate one woman, then we have educated a nation. By the permission of Allah. So if, if we continue this cycle of ignorance and domestic violence and abuse, then it's only going to carry on to the next generation. And we're already seeing the signs of this. Where a lot of the young sisters... They have no desire whatsoever to get married. They do not want to be a wife to a man who's going to physically or verbally abuse her or treat her like a slave or less than a slave who is going to beat them and, and humiliate them. And what is this to say about the young boys? Also, our young boys, the young men are growing up terrified when we speak to them you can see literally the terror and fright on their faces they're terrified of the thought of living in or being a part of a normal monogamous relationship they're terrified of their responsibilities of family life so they'd rather play it safe online this is the norm this has been the norm for the longest time where they are playing it safe online. And this is the problem, my dear Salam Iman, in these online communities where you have them to just, you're able to just post the best picture of yourself and to write whatever will appeal to the persons who will look and search for somebody like them. And then what does this create within our ummah, within our communities? We're creating a wishy-washy type of man that this type of young lad is afraid to go through the normal process and as being a man and knocking on the door and speaking to the wali as a gentleman and say I'm interested in your daughter in marriage this is something my dear man has become lost not only in the society, we can't blame them. Because Imam um, Muhammad Nasir al Rabani, he said, La them by the kuf. There is no sin after disbelief. We cannot blame them. We know that. Allah says, Lakum dinakum waliyadin. For them, their way of life, and for us, our way of life. We have a normal way of life which is rooted in the fitra of Islam. That the young man must be a gentleman enough and manly enough to approach the wali and ask and find out, inquire about the wali. But now, with the popularity of these dating apps and sites, even with the Muslims, the so-called Muslim dating apps, are promoting these types of things. Posting pictures. You have the woman posting pictures, well-made-up pictures of themselves. And the boy is posting pictures of themselves. And now we have this whole facade, this whole charade that is taking place between the two. La hawla wa la quota illa billah. We need to nip this trend in the bud and have our young men grow up as men, rajal, and go about seeking a spouse through the proper upright sources alhamdulillah we shouldn't you know we should try and get this picture out of the head that they believe and they feel that everything is a romance that they're watching on those on those bollywood shows and t and uh, movies everything is a romance that they're gonna fall in love like, love comes later on we have to make the youth understand the young men and young girls to understand that love will come later on. After understanding is between the two. After you have established understanding between the two, then Allah will put within the hearts mawaddatin wa rahmah. Allah will put into the hearts compassion and love between the hearts. But we should not try and pretend 
to be a couple. No, this is not the proper way to go about it. By getting each other's number or contact and starting to chat. Look, we need to have a clear-cut understanding of this, my dear Salam Iman, so that we do not, so as not to oppress the other unintentionally. When we want to meet somebody, we want to meet somebody with a clear intention that we are approaching the wali because our intentions are clear that we want to have a good halal relationship with that person and we want it's based on the Quran and Sunnah and we want to be there as a maintainer and protector till death do us part. And what did the Messenger say to the men? That the woman is married for four reasons. For her beauty, her status, her wealth, and her deen. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this, that's it. Farfa bidati deen tarbat yadad. Be happy. Be happy and marry the woman that has deen. Or may your hands be covered in dust. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also gave a bushra, a glad tidings for the Muslim woman, the married Muslima. He said, for that woman that prays her five daily prayers and she fasts her month of Ramadan, she obeys her husband and she maintains and preserves her chastity. It would be said to her, Enter into any door of Jannah that you choose. Allah Akbar. This is something that we have to encourage the young girls with, the young ladies with. We have a, a phenomenon that's taking place here in the GTA. We have many girls who are in the late 30s, 20s and 30s, that would have no intention of getting married. La hawla wa la quwwata billah. This, my dear brother, man, is something that we have to put a stop to. We have the young men without any intention of getting married because, no fault on their own, because of the abuse that they see their mothers going through at the hands of their fathers. So they're afraid that they will fall into the same abusive mind state and abuse their wife. So these are the things that we come up, that, that come out, or the skeletons that start falling out of the closet when we speak to these people. When we speak to our fellow Muslim brethren, we find out that these are the fears that are real, that they're experiencing within themselves. These are the genuine fears that they have. As they say, like father, like son. He's afraid that he's going to abuse his wife-to-be because his father used to get drunk and abuse his mother. My dear Basel, I mean, man, we have to understand that there's a lot of misconceptions within our ummah. There's a lot of misconceptions. There are many Muslim men who say boldly that work in the home is women's work. Real men, they work outside the home. Hasbunallah wa ni'maqil. I'm yet to find one delil or one man to bring a proof from the Quran or the Sunnah to prove, to validate this statement. Because I know this hadith is Sahih Bukhari. When Aisha, after when Aisha was approached and it was asked, how was the Prophet ﷺ in his home? She said that when he was in the house, he used to be in the service of his family. And when it was time to pray, when the Adhan was called, he would go out and pray. He would go out for the prayer. Allah Akbar. So my dear Muslim Iman, Islam strongly encourages us. It strongly encourages us to take part in the everyday mundane activities in the home. And Islam is a way of life that has nothing to do with oppression of women. Alhamdulillah, Islam gives the women their rights. We, have, we hear these slogans all the time in the West. And we have Muslim sisters who are jumping on that bandwagon. Why? Because a lot of the men, Ma'asif, Shadid, are stuck in their ways and they don't want to change. We have to, my dear Salam Iman, explain to the non-Muslims 
that Islam does not oppress women. Because when we speak to the non-Muslims, they have it ingrained in their mind when they see the man, they have it in their mind that Islam oppresses women. We have to make them understand that it's not Islam that oppresses women. It's the backwards mindset of some of the Muslim men that oppresses women. Because Alhamdulillah, I mean, it is our Prophet and Messenger Muhammad Islam who has stated in the Hadith, the best of you are the ones who are best to their families. And I am the best example for you, for my family. And he also said in the hadith, which is on the third of Abraham, who, who said the message of Allah, he said, The message of Allah, he said, the best of you and the most complete and excellent of you in Iman is the one who has the best character. And the one who has the best and most complete of characters is the one who is the best in treating the women folk. Allah Akbar. So this, my dear Prophet Iman, was the practice of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to be kind to the females. To be kind and considerate towards them. We need to explain to the non-Muslims that it is the cultural-minded Muslims that have a bias towards the females. And this is the reason why we have a lot of domestic abuse and violence in the homes. A lot of the sisters are being abused unduly by these types of individuals. And we have to understand that as Muslims practicing the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we have to know that the Muslim males and the Muslim females, they have an equal opportunity to gain closeness to Allah azza wa jal. Allah azza wa jal has stated in Surah Ahzab, ayat number 35, Inna al-Muslimina wa muslimat. Really, the Muslim men and Muslim women. Wa mu'minina wa mu'minat. The believing men and the believing women. Wa khanitin wa khanitat. And the men and women that protect their modesty. And the truthful men and truthful women. And those men and women who are patient. And the men and women who observe fasting. And the men and women who protect their chastity. And the men and women who remember Allah much. Allah has prepared for them both forgiveness and a great reward. Allah has blessed us. Little do a lot of us know and realize that Islam is a blessed way of life. None of us should blame any of the problems that we have in our homes on Islam. Islam does not oppress women. But we, as human beings, we oppress ourselves. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us the tawfiq and bless us to follow the, the blessed example of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of how he was towards his family. Amen. Bismillah, salat wa salam, ala rasulullah, wa ala alihi, wa sayyidu wa tabi huda, wa ba'd. For those of us who come in late, we're speaking about equality in Islam, and the importance of the sanctity of the Muslim home, wa alhamd. And there are many aspects in this, but we're specifically speaking about domestic violence in the homes. Protect us and give us safety. Alhamdulillah, mean, as Muslims, we have to know. Maybe we don't have the knowledge, but we have to know and realize that Islam is the best way of life. When we are practicing it according to the book and the sunnah, all of us have cultural differences. That makes us a diverse nation. That's a blessing in and of itself. But many of our families are becoming destroyed. Our sisters are distraught. And they're blaming 
each and every one of us are blaming the other party. So, Alhamdulillah, I'm mean, I want to end off with this ayah and to remind myself in all that for us to achieve this gender equality and to end domestic violence, then it's, it's a two way street. It goes both ways. We cannot point the finger at one party. Allah has mentioned in Surah Tawbah. Allah says that the believing men and the believing women, they are both supporters one to another. They order what is right and they forbid from that which is wrong. And they establish regular prayer. And they give regular zakat. And they obey Allah and His Messenger. They put Allah and His Messenger first. They are the ones who Allah will shower His mercy upon. Very Allah is mighty, Aziz. He is mighty and He is Hakim. So, Alhamdulillah, I mean, we. If we really want to stop, put a stop to domestic violence, especially from it going carrying on to the next generation, then we have to stop blaming each other. We need to take heed of the reminder when it comes to us. I've sat down with Muslim brothers, families, husband and wife, they have children, and men telling me how they are in front of my face, how they spit in the woman's face, how they abuse the woman. It's shameful to hear how a man can treat a woman. We need to take heed of the reminder when it comes to us. When we turn to the person and blame them, we have to remember that other fingers are pointed at us. Also, for our sisters, I want to remind you from the bottom of my heart that you have to know that some men, they have an understanding of things, but you have to be patient. You have to be patient with what takes place with the man. And we know that sometimes you can talk, but don't speak the, the things that are taking place between you and your husband outside of the home. Do not spread your disagreements outside of the home. Take it to the proper councils. But disagreements will occur between the family. And it's important to make plenty of dua and to remain patient upon the sunnah. Also, my dear Basalam Iman, I want to end this off with my very, one of my favorite quotes that's attributed to Muawiyah, where he said, I never apply the sword when the lash would suffice, nor the lash when my tongue is enough. If there is even one thread binding me and my fellow Muslim, I do not let it break. I do not let it break. If he pulls, I loosen it. And if he loosens it, I pull. End of quote. What does this mean, my dear Salam Iman? That for a relationship to work, there has to be some give and take. We have to be flexible and stay within the parameters of the Quran and Sunnah. May Allah bless all of our relationships, our families, our children, our spouses, and give us the sabr, the patience, and the, the yaqeen, the insight to endure whatever harms come our way. Amin, amin, amin. Inna Allah wa manaitu saluna ala nabi. Ya ila dina aminu. Salam salam salam. Alhumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Alhumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barak ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Rabban atin iftun hasna. Wafraq. Laqna adabna. Kama salam.